Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost and welcome back to some more Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. Last time, we started up our second world here in the game Glitter Gulch Mine, and we learned ourselves a new move, the Bill Drill. And with it, we explored a good amount of this area already, so we're ready to go ahead and use the transformation of this world. So let's go ahead and enter the hut here and use our set transformation. First things first, gonna go ahead and activate this warp point. That way we can have easy access to Wigwam's hut here. You have Glumbo. Want to get the Hubba? Sure, we'll give you the said Globo as always. So let's just go ahead, throw it in. We know the drill at this point. And now magic's ready, so just take a swim. So let's go ahead and take a dip. Wumbo call this detonator. Use left stick to move and press X for self-destruct attack. She's not kidding with that. This is a very risky move to use with the detonator. My attack here, if I press the X button to use it, I hurt myself. So it is definitely a self-destruct. You hurt yourself in the process of using the move. Be very, very careful when you use this move because it's not the best thing to use as the detonator. Really only use the move when absolutely necessary. So in my case here, I'm going to try to avoid using that move whenever possible because there's really no reason to blow myself up. There really isn't if you want to be honest. But the main use of the detonator here is to blow up all the TNT we've been seeing around the world. So that's really all we're going to be doing with this detonator. We're going to be blowing up TNT everywhere we see. Not that crazy TNT though. That will kill me. So I'm going to avoid that thing at all costs. So let's just grab these notes here. Be very careful not to get whacked by a random thing of TNT. Leap! I'm trapped in this mine by that block tunnel. Leap! Block tunnel, you say? Detonator to the rescue. Let's go ahead and blow up these rocks. And there you go. You're free, talking box. Go free. Explore the world. Or just hover along this railway track. It's something. At least it's getting to move. And it's actually getting out of here. It's very close to the exit. But as soon as it gets close enough, it stops. That's actually something we can't do until a little bit later on. So we're going to have to just let that box hover around that exit for a bit. That's actually linked to our next world in the game, World 3. So there's something we need to do in World 3. to open up that little tunnel way here in World 2. And then that box can go ahead and be set free. So, we'll have to remember that one for later on, but for now, let's hop our way back over to this warp point. And, apparently hit it on the edge. I did not think I was on the edge, but sure. Trying to navigate with the TNT is really difficult because it's really hard to go exactly where you want to go with this thing since it hops around all over the place. So it's a little awkward to move around with TNT. Here, I'm going to blow up this piece of TNT so I can go ahead and get inside the door. That's if I can jump through with this detonator. It's a little awkward to jump through doorways of all things. There we go. We got ourselves a blue Jinjo. Let's get out of here. Go through the door. Jeez, man. The detonator is so awkward to use. I hate how this thing just can't move. Just maybe an inch or two ahead. It has to go like a full foot. It's really, really awkward. So there's one more thing I want to go ahead and do with the TNT. It's over here next to the crushing station. So... This is actually kind of a useless thing for us now, but I want to show this off. If we come down this tunnel, we have ourselves this house that's just laced up with TNT. And if we blow up said TNT, then we can go ahead and enter this little cavern that's behind it. And the reason why this is useless is because this leads back into the flooded caves. So if you wanted to get a shortcut into the flooded caves, then there you go. This is one way you can gain access to it. But we already got the Jiggy in that area last episode. So there's really no reason for us to ever go back to that area. I mainly just want to show that's there in case you did not use the Speed Shoes in order to get to the Flooded Cave. Instead, if you're using the Detonator to get to it, then that's your access point. But that's everything we can do with this Detonator, so let's go back to Banjo-Kazooie. Honestly, the shortest amount of time I spend as a Detonator, the better. 
because I don't really care for that transformation all too much. It's not the best, in my opinion. It's just very awkward to move around. The fact that you can hurt yourself is really awkward. But yeah, that's that. So let's go ahead and enter this tunnel we actually opened up with that detonator. And as you can see, someone's just dying here in this cage because it's all poisonous. Over here, I need you to help me out of this frightful predicament. Who might you be? I'm Canary Mary. They used to send me down the mines to check for gas. If I died, they know it wasn't safe. Nice. I can think of more pleasant jobs. They just left me in here. I don't think I'll last much longer. Don't worry. I'll get Kazooie here to smash the cage open. If I must. We'll go ahead and do it before we all die, Kazooie. Woohoo! I'm free! It's moments like this that make adventuring worthwhile. But she hasn't even got a jiggy. Yeah, that's actually kind of a ripoff. Canary Mary just leaves. We don't get anything for our troubles. She's like, alright, thanks, bye. We're definitely going to be going over to where Canary Mary's landing and talking to her. Because that felt really cheap. If you want to be honest with me, we're always promised a Jiggy. Heck, just give me at least a Cheeto page. I'll take that. That's something, I guess. So, Canary Mary's over the other side of Glitter Gulch Mai. It's not too far from where we're at now, so it's not too bad. But let's go ahead and chase her down, because I want a reward. So, let's get out of here and immediately make our way over to Canary Mary here. And this is going to start a trend of button mashing mini games because Canary Mary here loves to race and where the race in this game you button mash hey there Canary Mary why are you still around oh my wings are still a bit stiff from spending so long in that cage how about a race to help me stretch them on this old hand card I'm sure it was broken when I saw it last it was but I fixed it. I put it back on the track. You're pretty resourceful for an old bird, aren't you? I like to try. Jump aboard if you fancy a go. Sounds like fun. What do we do? Simply tap X as fast as you can to drive the hand cart along. All right, let's do it. Let's jump on the cart and race. Ready? Three, two, one. Go! Time to mash the crap out of your controller! Canary Mary is very infamous if you played Banjo-Tooie. Canary Mary is known to teach you button mashing skills. And also is very known to give you early stages of arthritis. Canary Mary's races here in Glitter Gulch Mine aren't too bad. You just have to mash the X button here on the X button controller. It's a pretty rapid pace and you'll win. But Canary Mary shows up in a later world in the game. And oh boy, those races are fun. Canary Mary also teaches you that turbo controllers really aren't cheating because you don't want button mash for just a couple minutes straight. It's insane. These races take forever. I mean, look at how fast we're moving right now. And it's just mashing at a moderate pace. But we're taking forever to complete this race. We're going from one side of the mines to the other. It's a lot of button mashing. I'm taking it easy and pacing myself by just mashing with my thumb at a pretty slow pace. But if I, you know, mash at a very, very fast pace to basically break my hand, I'd be dead maybe a third of the way through this race. I wouldn't be able to mash anymore. So luckily, these races here in Glitter Gulch aren't too bad. I think we beat you there, Mary. Well, I guess you can have this shiny thing I found before I got locked in that cage. Is it a jiggy? I can't remember what it is. It's been under my wing for days. Ew! I'm not sure we want it in that case. That was a fine race. Sure was. My wings are starting to feel better. How about racing back again? Hop on the cart if you think you can beat me again. We'll keep that in mind for later. For now, I'm going to just grab this jiggy and hit this warp point. And also climb up this very steep hill. 
There's a couple things I could do in this section of level, so we might as well do that stuff before we rematch Canary Mary. So there's another yellow Jinja. We already got two of them. Two of them in one world is pretty good. So I'll definitely take that. So let's go ahead and make my way down here to this very long tunnel and enter this cave. And here we have a fork in a row. We can go left or right. If we go right, we lead back to this portion of the cave we were at earlier on. And we've already done stuff over in this portion, so we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be going over to the left side, which is very ominous looking. And in here, you got yourself the generator cavern. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to be hitting all of these little generators to make a light path for us to go ahead and see. Because this is very similar to the other dark cave we explored in the last episode. We need to go ahead and activate lights here in order to see where we're going. And if we don't, then it's much harder to see, but we can also use things like our fire eggs to actually see where we're going without hitting these generators. But since the generators provide a good amount of light, we want to go ahead and hit these things. Just make this easier. But yeah, this is just pretty much a platform we challenge in the dark. Just take your time here. Don't rush things too much and you should be fine. The generators are on a timer, but I feel like they give you more than enough time to go ahead and make these jumps. And this final generator, I don't know what the purpose of this one is because it only really lights a very, very small area in general. And most of the area lights up has a jiggy that's also lighting up the area. So yeah, that's kind of pointless if you ask me. But there you go, got ourselves a jiggy. Now, you're supposed to go through this entire room using these generators for light and make that whole ordeal up this entire area. But as you can see, they put a ladder here. If only we could just grab that from below. That would make things so much easier. We can't reach it with a backflip, but do a backflip, then ground pound. Banjo immediately grabs the ladder. So you can technically just grab this ladder and just climb up. Doing a terrible job demonstrating, but I did it earlier, so I'm doing it again. I just want to show this is possible. See that? Banjo climbed the ladder. Even if for a split second, he climbed it. As you can see, we can just cheese this puzzle. And this is possible to do in any version of the game you play. So if you're playing an N64 or the 360 port of this game, you can just climb the ladder. You don't even need to do the puzzle. So I just want to show how to do the puzzle and also how to do it the illegitimate way as well. Well, that's everything in that portion of the mine. So we could race Canary Mary here, but I actually want to go into the train station area here first and see what's in here. Well, that train looks like it had better days. That's really destroyed. But there is a mumble pad in front of it, so maybe mumble can fix this train up. We'll remember that for later. But there's really not much we can do in here. I mainly just wanted to come in here to show off the train and also to get this honeycomb, so... There's the honeycomb piece. Let's get out of here. It's time for the rematch. Let's go, Canary Mary. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Mash away! And this is awkward to mash on an Xbox One controller. For reference sake, if you haven't used an Xbox One controller before, the buttons on the controller are all round. So it's very easy for your fingers to slide off the button when you're trying to button mash like this. Honestly, I'm not sure if anyone play tested the Canary Mary sections of Banjo-Tooie when they poured this over the Xbox 360. Because even playing this with a 360 controller is a little awkward for the same reasons. The buttons on the 360 controller are slightly bigger, making this slightly easier, but it still doesn't beat the N64 controller. With flat buttons, it's so much easier to button mash compared to the Xbox One and Xbox 360 controllers. But hey, I work with what I got here. The Xbox One version in particular is the easiest version to play and also just plays so nicely. It's amazing to play this game without seeing it run at 10 frames per second. So I'll definitely take slippery buttons compared to 10 frames per second. Two out two for us, Mary. Perhaps you like this piece of paper as a prize. It's been wedged in my... No, I don't want to know where it's been. I think I spent quite enough time in this gloomy old mine. I'm off to swoop and soar amongst the clouds. Bye-bye, friends. Perhaps we'll see each other again.
I am not looking forward to that revisit. I don't know how I missed that page there. That was a little weird, but there you go. Got ourselves our seven page. Now, let's go ahead and open up this boulder because we can enter this area and do something over at this portion of Glitter Gulch Mine. This is the ordinance storage entrance, and in here, we got ourselves a little bit of a situation to deal with, but can't do anything right now. Stop! I can't let you go in there. Why not? I learned the Briegel Plaster. Got a real problem in there, and shooting's not the answer. Okay, your problem's not to shoot. Nope, not going in till you can defend yourself without shooting. Well, that's a problem. Gee, I wonder if we can learn a move that will allow us to enter the area without shooting. Oh, convenient, there's a way to learn a move over here that will allow us not to shoot things. How convenient! Another use for the feathered freak! Makes good of her pointy beak. The bad guys know it's no joke. Just press X to give him a poke. That'll be all. Dismiss. So yeah, now if we press the X button in this first person mode state, we'll go ahead and use Kazooie here. Basically it's like a battering ram of some sort. So now we can enter this area without having to worry about shooting. We're good to go. Let us in. You learn a beak attack, huh? Sure have, partner. Well, maybe you can help me out here. A real nasty bunch of TNT sticks have escaped from their box and are threatening to blow up my mind. Don't worry, we'll go in there and blast them. No! Shoot one and the whole mine will explode. You have to try and defuse them somehow. Anything else? Yep. You have to be quick. Because when you defuse the first them, the others will probably start their detonator timers. Well, that's not good. So this is a speedy challenge. We got to defuse all the TNT as fast as possible. But I think we'll actually save that for the next episode. Next time on Let's Play Banjo-Tooie, we'll be entering the mines and defusing a whole bunch of TNT. I'll see you guys next time.